So Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell testified before before Congress recently, and he talked about how the Fed is now probably going to be targeting higher price inflation. He said that the inflation rate, which was higher last year, has dipped below their inflation target of 2%. 2% inflation, in my opinion, is bad, but the Fed wants inflation, and so the Fed can start to force higher, higher inflation. On top, and on top of this, we have Federal Reserve Board of Governor members in the last couple weeks talking about additional, either removing the QT programs and then additional policy tools for QE. One of these Fed Board of Governors is Chl Clorita. And he said the Fed will consider new tools to ease policy if needed, says new tools to be reviewed include some the Fed has rejected before in past programs, like capping treasury yields. I believe this is almost exactly what the Bank of Japan has been doing for a very long time. So the best case scenario, if the Fed ends QT soon, switches to more QE, and then starts trying to cap treasury yields, the best case scenario will be what has happened to Japan or more and worse stagflate and taxes and lie. So, and it is very interesting. This is comments from my friend at the Mises Institute who follows the Fed. He says the Clorita comments are particularly concerning as Clorita was one of the more level-headed voices added to the FOMC. And Clorita has talked about how little QE has helped and very against negative interest rates. And so we know that the academics at the Fed have been, some of them, have been writing research reports about how negative interest rates would have helped their recovery. We know that's bullshit, but there are these academics that still believe in that stuff. So the reason I wanted to, the main reason I wanted to do this video, and I have to do a, you know, a disclaimer warning about this, and this is not financial advice or anything like that. This is, the stuff I'm going to talk about is based on about 10 years of research for me as a financial historian going back and reading things that most people will not read anymore. Okay, the majority of people in the financial industry, even financial historians like Neil Ferguson, who will not cover topics like this. Um, there are a very small percentage of people that have gone back and re read about the collapses of empires, whether it's the Mongolian Empire, the Roman Empire, the British Empire, the U.S., uh, While well, the U.S. hasn't collapsed yet, but the U.S., and I'm going to talk about this um, over the next re remaining parts of this live stream show, is very, very similar. And a lot of the, these topics, if you do not watch rated R movies, if you do not like politically correct topics, if you do not like adult topics, I, I suggest you just turn turn off the live stream show now because this is, this is hard hitting. This is going to be... I'm not going, going into graphic detail per se or anything like that, but it is very disturbing. It is about, and I've connected this, I don't think that there is any academic research, any academic economists or other people doing research that is tying the sinister side effects of inflation, the correlation between inflation, rising inflation rates and taxes with rise in crime. Crime such as you know armed robbery, shoplifting, and prostitution okay and i could tell you if you go back and there's the modern case of venezuela with as the inflation rate has grown and grown there's more men women and children um in venezuela or trying to leave venezuela uh going to colombia can't get work permits who are resorting to prostitution to survive but if you go back and read the financial history and there's tons of books on this but most people will not read them. It is a lot of work to go and read them. I have not read all of them myself because there are so many pages to reading them. I could name you some of the books. I will talk about the books a little bit later in this live stream show. I'll give you a list of the books if you want to go and read them. They are there. Are, some of them are an audiobook, like When Money Dies by Adam Ferguson. That is an excellent book. That talks about like the Weimar Republic hyperinflation. So that's on audiobook, and then there's also the um, book about the Great Depression, whether it's Murray Rothbard or Amity Schley's The Forgotten Man. Murray Rothbard wrote the Great Depression book. He was an excellent financial historian, besides being an, an anarcho-capitalist and Austrian school economist. But basically, boy, I have to be careful with what with the things I say here, but I've been researching like with YouTube videos now for weeks this more and more and all these governments and 
uh, this is the main reason why I don't think you will see an academic economist or even a business school professor go back and say, well, it's sinister what governments do and central banks do with rising the inflation rate and it creates more crime because, number one, they want to underreport the real inflation rate. So if they actually did a study showing all the sinister side effects of inflation, how there's the, the more inflation increases, the more bad crime increases, the more prostitution increases because people cannot keep up with their standard of living. So people become more and more desperate, more and more morally bankrupt. They're willing to literally do almost anything to survive. And the YouTube videos that I've watched, and you could go look at this, and there's YouTube videos coming out now, that in the developed world where supposedly, whether it's Japan, Europe, the United Kingdom, even the U.S., there's supposedly very little inflation. Okay, and there, there's a video from a guy in Japan, actually multiple videos, where he interviews people on the streets in Japan. He even interviews, this is over the last only year or so. It has over a million views. I could look it up and put it the video in the information section where he interviews a broker who actually gets college girls and married women prostitution jobs because they need the extra money and they cannot afford how taxes are going up in Japan and how the government says there is no inflation but the cost of living for all the basic necessities keeps increasing. And the United Kingdom, I was researching this too recently, over the last 18 months or two years or so, this has really exploded, but from reading some of the articles, and there's literally dozens of articles, if you just Google or your whatever search engine, DuckDuckGo, if you don't want to be tracked, just um, Google, just research uh, UK rent for sex or rent for sex UK, and Literally, there's undercover investigative reporters, dozens of articles on this from all the mainstream media in the United Kingdom, all their papers, whether it's in London or Manchester, all the major cities and metro areas. And honestly, I don't think any of this would be happening. None of this would be happening. And there's men and women, college age or right after college age, men and women who are so desperate to get out of the house, have student loan debt up to their eyeballs. They're sacrificing their morals. They are willing to trade sex for rent. And yes, it's unethical, but there are investigators, um, there are reporters, excuse me, that are going undercover. There's articles about this. You can Google it. I'll put some of the links to this. There's dozens of them over the last 18 months. But from reading some of the articles, this scandal has been exploding for five years now. And I can tell you honestly that almost none of these things would be happening in society without fiat currency devaluation, without a real inflation rate, a really painful inflation rate, plus higher taxes, plus the student loan debt. And this is the sinister side effects. One of the, sin you're not going to hardly hear anyone else talk about this. I have not seen any. Uh, so my opinion, my thesis is that there is a very, very high correlation. If you go back and read financial history about the Weimar Republic hyperinflation and some of the other things about the empires collapsing, towards the end stage or depressions or financial panics or hyperinflations as the inflation rate rose and rose people could not put food on the table they even if they had a good job or two degrees they could not keep up with the price increases and they just resorted to you know doing whatever they had to do to survive and some of those things include prostitution well so the the watchman brings up a very interesting point the watchman brings up a very interesting point that as the inflation rates are underreported and increased, so they're stagflate and lie in the developed world in Europe, the United Kingdom, Japan, the U.S. Now, Japan is more homogenous. There's, they don't do a bunch of immigration, so their culture, may, there may be less crime except for Yakuza and some of the other stuff in Japan. But these other, as the inflation rate increases and taxes increase in these other countries and areas, you could see an explosion of crime. Of violent crime and also prostitution and from researching this on youtube with more videos about the developed world and talking with friends who travel more than i do outside of the united states it seems that basically a lot of cultures are the prostitution amounts of prostitutes and people willing to do immoral things with sex to survive or rent or food or whatever pay their bills pay for play is the new type of um sugar daddy sugar daddy and pay to play and I was going to share some, because my listeners always ask, I know this thing is kind of jambled. I don't have notes. This is off the cuff. I was very, I was, I've been debating for over a week now whether or not I should even talk about this, but I think it's important that I bring it to your guys' attention, that 
I think there is a positive correlation. It is very correlated between a rising inflation rate and more crime and prostitution and people willing to do things that they would never have done before to survive. And we see this, if you go back and read the financial history books, this is common as well. And But unfortunately though, the academics are not covering this as well as they should. And I got a little off topic there, but basically, for my listeners who live in developed countries and have either moved their expats and now live in other countries or have traveled to third world countries, this is actually very common in third world countries where women who either have a local boyfriend or are married to a local man will look for rich foreigners to either marry or date or pay for play prostitutes or pay for play or prostitution or some type of negotiation. And now I, I've seen an explosion of this in the United States, especially in major metro areas, especially in the DC metro area. Now there, there has always been prostitution. Okay. As a libertarian, I'm actually not against it as long as it is, it is two consenting adults and no one's being forced to do it. Okay. Two consenting adults who agree to it. I don't see any harm with it. However, this thing has exploded in order of magnitude in the last 10 years in the DC metro area. And maybe besides just the inflation rate rising and people can't pay their bills, maybe it's a combination of other factors with smartphones and dating apps or or um, women see all these, they're pressured with all these things on Instagram that they see all these models are traveling all over the world and have expensive clothes and electronics and all these other things. But literally when I go on a dating app now and I'm expecting to to look for normal girls. They are just not there anymore. 10 years ago, if I talked with a Democrat, I could take a Democrat woman on a date and she wouldn't want to castrate me or she wouldn't try to be negotiating up front for me to pay $150 or more for a first date and then negotiating what type of sex I would be getting in exchange for paying the money or in exchange for paying for a vacation, a week-long vacation out of the United States to Europe or somewhere else. You know, it's 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 become a transactional thing, which from what I hear is common outside the United States and third world countries. So that has come here to the United States. Um, I'm worried about it, this, and, t- and the reason I'm talking about it is if you do have children, if you have kids, especially if you have daughters, you need to make sure as a good parent to make sure that this stuff does not happen and don't let them do the sugar daddy stuff, okay? The sugar daddy stuff is bad. I mean, as a libertarian, you know, two consenting adults, but I, I think it's essentially wrong and a lot of these women get ruined and then they can't pair bond and have like normal relationships going forward. But I, it's pervasive. So I, I logged into a dating app about a week ago. It was on a Saturday night. And in a 20-minute span, there were six girls from age 21 to 28. In like 20 minutes, there were six different girls who just put on their profile, I'm a, like a broke college kid or I need a sugar daddy to pay my bills, willing to negotiate or something. So this thing is exploding. Okay, that's the point I'm making. And I think a lot of this has to do not only with the student loan debt bubble, but also because... In the United States, we have had really bad stagflation that has been underreported and taxes increasing besides the Trump tax cuts. We have taxes layered on at so many different levels at the state and local level that people just cannot keep up with for their standard of living. And this is the trade that some people are willing to make. So inflation, and they won't talk about this in a lot of different textbooks, very rarely is this talked about in the mainstream, especially most mainstream financial historians, that it can totally destabilize the society the worse the inflation gets. Same thing with taxes. So, uh, and a combination of the two, even stagflation. So if you have like 6 to 7% per year stagflation, that means in a little over... So if it's 7% inflation rate in a little over 10 years, your, your standard of living is going to be cut in half. And the average person has no wage increases. So this is pernicious. <laughs> These nuts. Okay, uh, so this this live stream show it's it's about financial history. It's about the sinister side effects of inflation. It's I'm not going to talk about stock prices today or too many market things related, but. These central banks, the Federal Reserve, I don't know if they're aware of this or not. I don't know if there's, I'm pretty sure because I've looked in the past, there's not really any academic studies that have looked at the correlation between a rising inflation rate and 
crime increasing like shoplifting, armed robbery, and then also prostitution. But I can tell you from studying financial history and checking out the anecdotal evidence from people living in countries like Japan and the UK rent for sex scandal, that these things for the most part would not be happening if there was no inflation as these governments claimed. So yes, there's other factors, but one of the main factors that no one is talking about is how their people standard of livings are being destroyed with inflation and taxes, currency devaluation, really bad stagflation, and this is leading to really sinister side effects in society that will eventually totally destabilize or destroy society. So Jerome Powell can talk about how we need to protect, we need higher asset prices so we can keep the banks, the pension funds, um, you know, people's retirement accounts solvent, those types of things, but in that's just in the short term. In the, in the long term, it's going to totally destabilize society. I know some of you are not going to like this. I've had some email discussions with a couple of you that were saying this is wrong. But there are very few people out there that put in the work. And uh, Let me just mention the book names now before I forget. So, When Money Dies, excellent book. The Nightmare of Deficit Spending, Devaluation, and Hyperinflation in Weimar, Germany by Adam Ferguson. So it's available on Audible Audiobook. I highly recommend that book. Um, there's also Dying of Money by Jens, J-E-N-S-O, Parsons, P-A-R-S-S-O-N-S. -S -S. It's a nom de plume or pen name. Um, there's Age of Inflation by Jacques Roof. He's a Frenchman. That's not Jack. One of my one of my loyal podcast listeners asked me, I can't find Jack Roof. No, it's not Jack. It's Jacques. <laughs> He's French. Okay. In most of these books, guys, you can find them, I think, on the Mises Institute website in the bookstore under economic history. Okay. So if you can't find them on Amazon, you should be able to find them in the Mises Institute website in their bookstore under and sometimes the Mises Institute offers a free PDF, that uh, ebook version that you can download for free. I just did that with one. I had to email Jim Poplava about this, um, one of the people he works with, because he mentioned one of these books a while ago. And um, the book that Jim Poplava recommends for financial history is called The Economics of Inflation by, oh, I'm going to screw up this name, it's Italian, Co Costantino Bresciani Taroni. I think I got it okay. So you can go to the Mises Institute website and look up the economics of inflation by Const Costantino Bresciani, B-R-E-S-C-I-A-N-I-T-U-R-R-O-N-I, -R -R -I, and you should be able to download the free ebook version, PDF or ebook version. It is a very long book. I have not read it yet. And like I said, there are very few people on this planet that have actually read a lot of these books about financial history, of studying the different collapses of empires, studying different financial panics. A lot of people in the financial industry think it's kind of boring, and maybe they've read one or two, but most of them have not read a lot of them or all of them. Uh, Jim Poplava of Financial Sense, he's one of the few that has read most of them. He's read most, if not all of them. He's read, um, I think, over a thousand books. So his podcast is free, or at least he has some free podcasts, and he also has a paid, I think, Financial Sense Insider, so he does go back and talk about this, but there are a bunch of other books. Let me name some more, make sure I get this to you guys. So The Forgotten Man, which I've read, I read last year by Amity, A-M-I-T-Y, S-H Schles, S-H-L-A-E-S, The Forgotten Man, A New History of the Great Depression. That's on Amazon, or you can get it on Audible Audiobook. It's a very interesting insights. Um, this one I read years ago. It's really good, though. Fiat money inflation in France. It's about the 1790s hyperinflation in France. So this is not the John Law hyperinflation. This is That one was about a, uh, a little over 100 years prior, I think. This one is the 1790s hyperinflation prior to the French Revolution. This is the Assignon. Actually, I think it was during the French Revolution. So that was very interesting. There's, okay, the economics of inflation, I already talked about that one. And you could go, there's other books about this. And the Mises Institute actually has a lot of these books. They're one of the few places that has like a collection of these. But if you study past panics and empire collapsing, like, so for, for the... Mongol Empire, I didn't cover all the topics on the Mongol Empire, I'll, I'll give you a brief summary. So the Mongol Empire, after Genghis Khan died, 
Kublai Khan, he switched from gold standard to fiat currency. He implemented an enormous bureaucracy for taxes. There was a enormous, you know, army that had to be paid and an enormous bureaucracy for the empire. And any territory or city that the Mongol Empire army conquered, they immediately confiscated all the knives and the swords. So history does not repeat, but it does rhyme. So there, look at all the similarities there are to today. The U.S. has an enormous welfare and warfare state, an enormous bureaucracy. So these things are not sustainable. History will eventually not fully repeat itself, but there will be similarities throughout history. Scott asks, I think I covered uh, the, and the inflation rate right now, if you go to the Chapwood Inflation Index, there's inflation between like 8% and 14% in every major U.S. city five-year average. The Chapwood Inflation Index, which is free, this tracks the inflation rate uh, measuring. It uses John Williams' shadow stats. It goes even more in-depth. Ed Batowski, I interviewed him on my podcast years ago. You can go listen to the archives. I asked him for his methodology, and he tracks um, with surveys a couple times a year 500 different consumer prices looking for changes in prices or changes in, like, cost per unit, like portion size. And so his inflation rate is showing really bad stagflation in the US in almost all the major cities. Uh, the lowest inflation rate I see in the top 10 is the five-year average is 8% in Phoenix. That's the lowest one. But Phoenix has a 7.4% inflation rate in 2018. So these so a 7% inflation rate means that almost every 10 years or so, give or take, that the prices are going to double if you live there and your standard of living is going to be cut in half. And the average person does not have the wage increases or the investment gains on their assets to make up for that. So people will be sacrificing their morals, sacrificing their morality, and doing things that they probably don't want to do to survive. And then normally with human behavior, it's rationalized. But with what we're seeing, the modern day example of this is Venezuela. There are a bunch of men, women, and children that do not want to do any of the stuff they're having to do to survive right now. It's really sad. I don't, I don't want to go into details about it, but there's tons and tons of articles about this, of all the really horrible things that men, women, and children are having to do to either get out of Venezuela, they can't get a work permit if they go from Venezuela to Colombia, etc., just to survive. It's it would shock some people. The watchman says the UK is beginning to have third world crime rates. Yes. And Tommy Robinson has has covered a lot of these things. I can't go into detail on a lot of that, but yes, he's he's being ostracized for basically reporting a lot of the stuff the mainstream media won't do. And I would expect things to get worse because the UK definitely has really bad taxes. The standard of living is being destroyed. They're eliminating free speech in the UK. It's gone. The free speech is in the UK. My buddies who are libertarians in London, I tell them to get the fuck out of there while they still can. If they work for a corporation, I tell them to transfer to a headquarter, corporate headquarters outside of the UK, either US or somewhere else. They, they need an exit plan immediately. So as inflation increases, the Fed, whatever excuse they have, the, the Fed wants to try to maintain high asset prices for a bunch of different reasons. If, you know, the, the banks, if asset prices fall, the banks look even more insolvent. If asset prices fall for a long period of time, the pension funds look even more insolvent. There's a global pension fund crisis coming by 2050. The estimates are that global pension funds are underfunded by 400 trillion with the T dollars. Okay. I'm sure the people in power are well aware of this. We're already seeing enormous pension fund problems throughout the United States. For a lot of places, they're not immediate concerns yet, but there are some like a pension fund in Texas two years ago, I think in Dallas, there was a run on the pension fund. There was, uh, I think policemen, it was a police pension fund and they were underfunded and you just had people just pulling their money out left and right as fast as they could. So yes, this is jambled. I didn't put everything down to notes. I was, I wanted to talk about this. I know these are very uncomfortable topics, but the truth, if you study financial history, 
if you look at the collapse of empires and past inflationary panics, hyperinflations, depressions, those types of things, you will see that as the inflation rate rose and people became more unsure of their economic situation and their wages could not keep up with the things to survive they needed to survive every day, that they became more and more desperate and were willing to do things like crime, like violent crime, stealing, prostitution, those things in order to survive. And now, like, there's a bunch of other anecdotal examples I could give with dating stories. I'm not sure if I want to do that, but it's just becoming, it's just becoming ridiculous. And uh, the U.S., I expect things to get worse. Stefan Molyneux actually had, I'll give you an, another anecdotal example. Stefan Molyneux had a caller call into his uh, radio show about eight months ago. It was sometime last year, and the guy lived in Florida, and he was like this retiree, and he said he kept in good shape, and he said he was paying all these University of Florida University of Florida college student sorority girls. They were doing like sugar daddy or pay for play or prostitution stuff. And he said that some of these women were well taken care of by their parents, that they drove used Mercedes Benz and BMWs. And he asked them, why would you want me, a sugar daddy, to pay you for sex? Or why would you want to be a prostitute? And the, I guess like American culture now is more acceptable because of the pop culture stuff with a lot of these songs about sugar daddies and stuff like that, that they're more acceptable than that. But also these girls, I guess like it's a gotta have it now culture and it's that immoral and the the morals the morals of society have changed so much that these girls wanted like a brand new iPhone every year that their parents weren't going to pay for. They were college students, so they had to spend too much time studying. They couldn't get like a real job. And so they wanted like a brand new iPhone every year. They wanted to go on all these expensive vacations so that, with their friends, like cruises and expensive vacations so they could take pictures for their Instagram and then also for their Snapchat. And then they wanted to like expensive things. They wanted like expensive clothing and jewelry and electronics and shoes, you know, all those things that, that a well taken care of woman would want or woman who had a good career would want. And they wanted to show those off to their friends. So this is the new normal and um, I expect it to get a lot worse. I will take a look at the questions and comments section, but I'm not going to answer any like stock trade stuff or anything like that today. I just want to talk about this because I think it's important. And so as these five or six large central bankers keep changing the rules and doing more QE and cap yields and force asset prices higher and force more stagflation and taxes into the real economy and then lie and underreport the real inflation rate and still layer on more taxes. By the way, one of my listeners told me that even though Japan technically has no inflation, and they've been trapped in deflation for decades. He said that most people in Japan pay between 60 and 70% income tax. And the standard of living in Japan for a lot of things, for rent and things like that, they live in a tiny amount of space. So you're not, there's, yes, sir, the, the academic economists are claiming that there's deflation, but there's no beneficial deflation. If there was beneficial deflation in Japan, their standard of, of living would be increasing. Okay, so that's what Austrian school economics and free, free market economics would say that if there was real deflation, beneficial deflation, as the academic economists claim in Japan, then people would be getting more for less, not less for more. So reality is totally different than what the economic propaganda, the politicians, the bureaucrats, and the academic economists are telling us and the central bankers are telling us. Hello, Lena. I'm glad you think this is good info. Thank you. It's a little bit jambled, but I thought it was an important topic. The Watchmen 2011 repeating his comment again. The UK is beginning to have third world crime rates. I would expect we're, we're seeing in the US, we're seeing the same thing in Chicago. And Chicago has been a fully Democrat controlled city with corruption and the Democrats controlling Chicago for over 100 years. There, I think maybe once in a while there's been a Republican for a year or two or three, and then the Republican's gone and the Democrats kick him out and it's right back to business as usual. So Chicago's not going to get fixed until the people say, you know what, this is the fault of the Democrat Party. There's too much bureaucracy here. The taxes are too high. And with the behavior of Chicago and Illinois, we're not seeing any of that yet. In fact, Illinois wants to solve their underfunded pension problem and the fact that there's too high taxes by issuing more debt and raising taxes.
raising property taxes. So people in Illinois, the most productive people or upward, upwardly mobile people in Illinois are going to leave. And it's already happening. Same thing with California. There was a Zero Hedge article today, I think, about California that Californians are leaving in mass. And I've been saying this for a long time. Go back and listen to the archives. That's one of the best things about doing a podcast and putting your stuff on record, as long as you're not wrong all the time. <laughs> as long as you're not wrong all the time. But I can tell you, though, that here in the United States, I will not name names, but I know for a fact there are people in there are like people who have podcasts and do and are interviewed a lot in the gold community and alternative media who are taking advantage of these women that cannot pay their bills, that are paying their rent in exchange for favors, for sugar daddy arrangements. Okay, I can't go into any more details, but both outside the U.S. and here in the U.S., it is there. There are people taking advantage of this, and it's going to get worse. So the U.S. will, if inflation increases and taxes increases, and there's more stack flight in line, more taxes, the U.S. will turn. It won't happen right away, but over time, it will turn morally and all the behavior will become all the stuff you see in a third world country if you're an american or european who goes as a tourist to thailand or somewhere in south america or eastern europe that will be some the bad things that you hear like sex tourism and other stuff that will be coming here to the u.s Okay, Watchmen, I don't think we're anywhere near there yet, like what happened in Greece. So we're not there yet. Watchmen asks if we will see it be common for teen, teenage girls to sell themselves for sandwiches in the U.S. soon like Greece. That's happening in Venezuela. So we're not there yet. The U.S. has the world's reserve currency and can still, the people in power, the Federal Reserve and the Wall Street banks can still either export the inflation to other countries or they can direct the monetary inflation and the credit mostly to the asset markets. So they can keep things in like a manageable level of stagflate and lie where most people won't even notice that their bills are rising and know that it's really bad inflation and that they'll just blame capitalism. And that's why the people in power have made like a heads we win, tails you lose type of society now here in the U.S. with the brainwashing in government schools and the mainstream media and mainstream financial media where the central banks and the politicians from both political parties and the bureaucrats all mess things up further. And you have the large corporations involved in this as well and the banks and the military industrial complex and they mess things up further and then they blame it on capitalism even though we don't have real capitalism. We have like fascism economics and cultural Marxism and socialism in the U.S. economy, a lot of it. Well, in society, not in the economy. Cultural Marxism and socialism are in society, the culture. So we're not we're not at those levels of Greece and, and Venezuela yet, but give it another 10 years of stagflation, higher stag, a 7% inflation rate or higher per year, plus tax increases, and we will get to those levels. And Adam Ferguson in When Money Dies... He says he did an interview with Jim Poplava years ago on the Financial Sense News Hour. It was free. I don't it should be in the archives. And he said he doesn't think the US will hyperinflate. He said that the first of all, no world reserve currency in world history has ever had hyperinflation, but he thinks that the US will ha just have really really bad stagflation and that it will get worse and that will be like pernicious stagflation and taxes increases per year will be what will destabilize society. To kind of those third world country things that we're that I was discussing earlier in this live stream show. So you need to educate yourself and protect yourself accordingly. That means teach your kids you know good morals and protect yourself from being armed robbery and shoplifting in those things. There's plenty besides guns and ammo, there's plenty of technology now to protect yourself. And you have to be friends with your neighbors. If you're close in your community, your neighbors can watch your house, maybe, while you're gone. Uh, if you go on vacation or you go to, to the store or something. So it's important to do that. If you're totally isolated from everything and everyone, and you're the rich guy up in the compound there, then when the people do come with the pitchforks in town, they're going to say, hey, that's the rich asshole up there that everyone hates, that doesn't talk to anyone because he thinks he's better than, than us, and let's go rob and destroy his house and take all his shit. So isolation is probably not the best solution to this. 
but that's what a lot of the really, really rich people are doing by buying these compounds in New Zealand. 6 6 Sigma. Um, American college girls, there's good looking American college girls, and I could tell you they're already like messaging like older men to do these trades. It's all it's on regular dating apps. It's not even on any of the salacious ones. It's on normal ones. And they're negotiating. It's a it's transactional. It's ridiculous. Okay, well, I think I've covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover, and I will attach links to some of those books if you want to go check them out. There are a lot of free things if you want to go back. It is a ton. I can tell you, it is a many, many hours of work to go back and read stuff in the past. There are some audiobooks, but most of these books are not on audiobooks, okay? So if you want to go back and read about, like, the hyperinflations in Austria that von Mises talked about, there is, like, an audiobook or two about that, but a lot of these books are old and out of print, and they are not on audiobook. So maybe that's a project for one of you guys who wants to help the world, who wants to transcribe some of these things into an audiobook and help other people. That might be an, an idea. A lot of these books that talk about the problems of the past and, and actually historically accurately document the, the past in, hyperinflations and inflations and panics and depressions are not properly on audiobooks. So the average person is not going to spend many, many hours reading a 500 page book one 500 page book let alone dozens of them and this is the problem if you don't study history you're not gonna you're not you're gonna be doomed to repeat a lot of the same mistakes and this is what we're seeing now people this is an important thing from studying history this is one of the most important lessons of history people do not change okay technology changes but people really do not change throughout history people act pretty much the same it's in cycles and what we're seeing now is a lot of people are forgetting the lessons that past generations had to painfully learn. And normally humans, this is a sad part about the human condition and being human, is that most humans only learn through pain. Okay, whether it's financial pain, emotional pain, physical pain, that is normally how most humans learn. Myself included. I've read over 500 books and still, you know, those it's it's part of the human condition and how like our feeble human brain a lot of it works. Okay, well, I think I think I've said enough for today. There's a ton of questions and comments here. If you really want me to answer additional questions and comments, comment below the video after the live stream show is over. But I poured my heart and soul out to you guys today. Some of you guys are not going to be happy I discuss these topics, but I think it is important and I want you guys to really learn from history. I don't expect anyone here to actually go back and read all these books. But uh, history was one of my undergraduate majors, and I do appreciate history, and it is a lost skill, a lost art. And like I said, very few financial historians, even Niall Ferguson, Neil Ferguson, and even um, Tom Woods hasn't read most of the financial panics because I haven't had him discuss, heard him discuss a lot of these things. And he's a financial historian, and I think he, he has a master's degree from Harvard. So there are very, very few people on this planet that have actually read all of these books and that can actually speak about all the different things that happened in the past. And if we don't talk about the things that happened in the past, we won't learn from the mistakes. Okay, guys, well, that's it. I'm going to take a break now. Thank you for listening if you like this video.